Hey everyone, Chris from Computer Stuff here. Today we will be review. Here we have the Tinico S5. Uh, now we originally reviewed the Tinico S3 Floor One, whatever it was called. It was actually one of our first good videos. Anyway, uh, we reviewed that a couple years ago, and I had some beef with it. But it looks like Tinico has gone to some considerable lengths to improve upon those defects, if you will. Of course, due to my video, I'm sure. But anyway, let's go ahead and dive right into the changes that they've made, and if this thing is now worth buying. It starts off with the clean water tank and the dirty water tank. So, I was very surprised that the clean water tank is now, um, well, it looks twice the size. It's, it's not. Uh, to be very specific, Tinico says that the S5 is equipped with a 0.8 liter clean water tank and a 0.7 dirty water tank, which is here at the front. Now, that is 0.2 liters bigger than the old S3, respectively. That should make cleaning both around the house and cleaning during the cleaning cycle, all of that stuff, last considerably longer, which was really one of the chief complaints that I had. In fact, uh, basically filling up this tank in the old one was, not only was it a pain in the butt, but you had to do it like every two minutes because it would just run out of water and solution. But it looks like they may, may have addressed those kinds of things. The other complaint that I had with this unit, and I'll try to show this in some stock footage, but the other complaint I had was that it had a very, very bad edge, um, like the, the brush didn't quite get to the edge of your trim. So that meant that there was like damn near a one inch gap that was not being hit by the brush roller, which in my opinion pretty much defeated the purpose of a nice high end mop, especially for the price tag that you were in. But it looks like they have resolved those two issues. So we're gonna go ahead and run this thing through some practical tests and talk about it a little bit. Um, and I'm gonna actually, let's, let's go ahead and kick it off with one kind of cool thing. They are very generous with the Tinico sol the solution that you have to have in order to, in order to use your mop. But they basically gave you a 17 liter uh, flute, uh, 17 fluid ounce bottle of this stuff, which is larger than most beers at a restaurant. And if you register your unit, they will also give you another bottle of that stuff free. Um, comes with a second filter. So the dirty water tank, when you pop that off, has a little filter that goes on it. They gave you a second one of those. I don't know how long they last, but nevertheless, it was kind of a nice touch. And the other cool thing is that they gave you a second brush roller as well. So that way when you pull after you run this thing through a cleaning cycle, and you will probably want to continue cleaning these things quite a bit, uh, you can let that one dry and then pop the second one in. Now, these brush rollers are made out of sort of a nice cloth sort of terry towel type feel, which by comparison to the High Zero, which has sort of like a polymer foam brush roll, should potentially last a little bit longer. But anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and see if uh, how the cleaning potential does in this thing. Now, uh, Tinico does say that you can use this both on hardwood floors and, or hard floors and carpeting. And I do think that because it has a sort of towel-like brush on it, that it can probably get into the cracks of like grout and tile and that kind of thing pretty well. Now, another complaint that I had with this unit back with the S3 was that the, the thing was constantly talking to you. Charging has commenced. Auto detecting. Whether to run self-cleaning cycle. Please clean dirty water tank. Cleaning solution. Please begin self-cleaning cycle. And, well, I'll demonstrate that that has not changed yet. Charging has commenced. Auto detecting whether to run self-cleaning cycle. Please clean dirty water tank. And yes, I know that you can turn those comments, the, the, the talking mechanism off in the app, but um, you know, I don't really want to connect my goddamn vacuum to, uh, to an app. Anyway, uh, this is the S5. There is an S5 Pro model. Now, what the S5 Pro model allows you to do is it gives you kind of a fancier screen on top, and I'll demonstrate the S5's screen in a little bit more detail in a moment, uh, but it gives you a little bit more, a fancier screen at the top. It almost makes it kind of like a Tesla autopilot looking thing directly on your vacuum, and it's kind of fancy and cool, but you know, is it really, do you really need it? And the answer is probably not, but there is one nice, uh, one nice feature that the S5 Pro has, and that is that it has a suction only mode. So for those that don't want to do the mopping, it just turns on the suction feature. And I think that that is pretty neat. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and fill this thing up with water and solution, and we're gonna find out if this thing has improved. First things first, here we have the cleaning solution. And here we have 
the clean water tank. There we go. Tendigo says that you want to use a capful for uh, one full tank of liquid or of, of a clean water tank there. Break through this plastic crap. I think this happened, this happened last year. There we go. Brute force. So we're just going to go ahead and fill up the cap. We're going to open this lid. Now, you'll notice that they haven't really improved upon the way you dump this crap in. I still kind of feel like it is awkward and messy. The way that Bissell does it is superior. You'll also notice that, actually that, that does fit, that kind of fits, but you're gonna have to kind of lean it over. They said that you should use warm tap water. So make sure you run your hot water there, and then we just fill it up. I still think that they could work on their clean water tank design a little bit, but uh, I would say arguably that's a little bit better than last year's. And again, it's bigger than the S3s. Let's go ahead and take this vacuum mop, vac mop, for a practical ride. So it starts by, do this number, we'll hit the power button right here. There's the screen. Here you can adjust the mode it's on. But we're gonna, we're gonna keep it on auto. Again, one of my biggest complaints with this thing in the previous model was the edge-to-edge -edge cleaning. And I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but it actually looks like it did a pretty damn good job. In fact, I can feel moisture on the trim right here. So yeah, they they improved the edge cleaning on it. I mean, by all accounts, I mean, there's not, I mean, there's no bezel there really. So nice job, Tinico. Now, another complaint I had with the original S3 model was that there was too much space going on here. So kind of like the edge cleaning on your trim, there was too much space between where this thing actually connected with the wall and it would always leave crap against your baseboard or the wall. Now, in the S3 model, I literally had a piece of dust that was against, and yes, I know my trim looks terrible in, in the studio, but anyway, uh, there was a piece of dust that this thing could not vacuum up. So here I have, a very, very tiny wood chip and a screw. And we're gonna see if it can get those things. Interesting. So it uh, did get the, the lightweight wood chip um, immediately. And as far as the screw was concerned, I had to kind of hit the sort of the corner of the vacuum up to it. But I guess, you know, that's not too bad because the piece of dust, it didn't matter whether I approached it head on or from the side, it just didn't pick it up. Whereas um, this, at least the screw got picked up from the side of the vacuum. So I'm going to count that as a win. Here's an interesting update. So I was vacuuming and I started noticing the brush was shedding. You can see parts of the brush there on my carpet. And if we come over to the vacuum here, it's all wet on the damn floor. There is a big bald spot on the roller. What is only to be assumed from that screw. So, Jesus Christ, you really tore the shit out of this thing. I don't mean to be like, I mean, that is, that is not a big screw. <laughs> Look at the damage it caused to the roller. The 
opening at which this thing is sucking in is only, I don't know, it's about, you know, maybe like an inch and a half. I mean, that, I mean look at all the destruction in there. I mean, it must have gotten caught in one of these little, like, ridges here. So, pro tip, don't, don't use a screw on this. I'll say this, though, the mechanism that you take the brush roller in and out of is actually quite nice. It sort of snaps in place. You just sort of yank it out, kind of magnetically kind of clips back in. That's a nice design touch. If only the roller didn't get destroyed by a screw. All right, so we're going to clean this dirty water tank here. Taking out the filter. That looks pretty clean and in good shape. We are... It's getting lit off. Sort of comes up like that. There's some leaves and crap caked in there. Kinda. There's that screw. It does not do the greatest job at separating hard debris from the rest of the liquid. I mean, there's a lot of, I mean, there's leaves in there. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Dump that down the drain? I mean, Ultimately, I'm going to put that down the toilet. What I wanted to do in this part of the video is sort of narrate this thing's vacuuming capabilities. So here I am sucking up its own, <laughs> its own brush roller that it decided to shed. Uh, I'm going over a couple of spots too on the carpet. There's some, some brush roller stuff. It does a decent job at sucking things off of carpet. Uh, you know, it might require a couple of extra passes, but for that matter, it also requires a couple of extra passes on hardwood as well. And I'll uh, show that here in just a moment. So if we come over here, we've got another sort of leaf, piece of dust. It's picking all of that stuff up fine. Uh, but as soon as we get to some muddy boot prints on the light hardwood floor here, it seems to struggle slightly. That was fresh mud, if you will. And... I'm having to go over it what, man, about three times to really get it there. And the same can be said for a couple of these other little little extra spots too. You know, this is stuff that's, you know, for what it's worth, a steam mop would probably pick up, a, you know, almost instantly or just a little bit better. There it's struggling to get that leaf over the trim. You know, I think one of its biggest failures is its suction power, which it just has fairly little of. Uh, here's the same deal. We have some leaves that we're going to be pulling up. Um, it hit these, you know, pretty good. Um, you can see the little, the little red line on the on the LCD going going crazy. It basically is indicating that it's that it's uh, picking up, you know, more more debris and needs to pick itself up a notch. The auto feature does work pretty pretty well. Uh, the solution that they give you, it does dry pretty tr pretty quickly. So the water and everything, you know, when you when you go over the floor, you get a little bit of liquid left behind. It does uh, it does do a pretty good job at drying up within maybe just a few minutes. So that's kind of nice. You're not you know walking around on like wet moppy floors. It picked up some fluff and some other crap on our carpets, like some little crumbs and things. And uh, but you know by all accounts, it's not a vacuum cleaner. I'm sure a Dyson V15 will do a hell of a lot better. But it did a fine job. I mean, it picked up the the fluff and crap. So for a small office or studio, I think this unit, you know, is pretty good. Or if you're, if you've got like a downstairs with like a predominantly, or like a, you know, house with predominantly hard floors, maybe some throw rugs, area rugs, that kind of thing, it's probably also not too bad for that either. But there is one thing that I wish that they would address, and for that matter, all manufacturers, that is the garbage that they ship with it. This is just some of the plastic. They were just as generous with the cleaning solution as they were with the plastic trash. I already used that joke in the unboxing video, but it stands true. And that's not all. There is stuff in the cardboard box. There's all kinds of cardboard and junk in there too. I do kind of think that manufacturers can stop shipping with so much plastic crap in their packaging. Maybe that's just me. So what's my assessment of the Tinico S5? Um, they have improved on a lot of the things that I really hated about the S3 Floor 1 model. They made the tanks bigger, uh, they made it a little smarter, lasts a little longer. Noise-wise, it's about the same. It does pick up a lot of, like, light filth in your, in your carpets and on your hardwood floors. But there are some things that I wish that it would improve upon, like maybe adding kind of like some kind of like scrubby 
spots on the roller in order to be able to get like really hard, heavy gunk and junk off of your floor. For example, uh, there's some spots on our floor that were like kind of like scuff marks or shoe marks, um, stuff that's kind of, you know, you kind of need to kind of chip away with your fingernail. Doesn't get any of that stuff off, which maybe I'm, my expectations are a little bit too high with that kind of thing. But the dirty water that came out of the tank was pretty damn filthy. So, you know, it's obviously picking up some dirt and junk. The other thing is too that I think they need to kind of reassess is the mechanism that separates the dirty water and the hard uh, contents. Effectively, they want you to be able to sort of just dump the liquid down the drain and then you can pitch the hard stuff. Uh, like in my case, it was the screw and some leaves and stuff like that. Except some of that stuff got caught on top of the, the filter part. So, you know, you're then dumping that just right down your drain. So they kind of need to rework the mechanics on that a little bit as well. By all means, I do think that the S5 is an improvement upon the S3. It seems to be just sort of a little better all the way around. But if you're looking for kind of an all-in-one mopping solution for your house that will sort of make the job a little bit easier, I, you know, it, it, it is better than the S3. But, you know, some of my original complaints, um, you know, again, the edge cleaning and stuff like that have been resolved. I did think it was a little bit weird that the screw absolutely destroyed the brush roller. I can't, Im I mean, that screw was not big, but it got trapped in just a little tiny groove in the head unit and it just wreaked absolute havoc. I mean, that's, that brush roller needs to be replaced now. Um, having said that though, uh, you know, I mean, some people will have toys lying around or they will accidentally hit, you know, screws or Legos or something like that with the unit. It, it seems like that part was not particularly well thought out. I don't want to say that like this situation was unique, but I feel like it could happen to somebody else. But some other uh, kind of catches that you'll need to be aware of too is, for example, that little hole where the, uh, you know, where it sucks the dirty water into the dirty water tank, um, that does get dirty. You are going to need to pull off that dirty water tank, clean that little hole. It's going to require some maintenance, much like the old unit. That self-clean feature will only work but so well. They didn't quite seal the gaskets enough where the dirty water tank meets the head unit to avoid stuff kind of getting caught up in there. So do I like it? Yes. Do I like it better than the S3? Yes. Do I think you should buy one yourself? Maybe, but bear in mind you're buying a very expensive, what I would still consider kind of a beta product. You know, it's 500 bucks, but it's, um, it's a good unit, but is it, it, you know, is it $500? I don't know. You be the judge, you decide. Hey everyone, I wanted to do a quick follow up here. Um, we recorded the video and have continued to do extensive testing on the Tinico S5 to kind of see if it's a product that we recommend to people. Now, before I give that answer away, I want to follow up with a couple of concerns and experiences that we had with it that we're pretty confident other people will have as well. Now, I get a lot of hate on the S3 video. It's always the same thing. People kind of like complaining that well, you can turn off the voice prompts and this is a great product, et cetera, and so forth. And I feel that that is, those complaints are being levied by people that are a very sort of like small window of customers for this particular product. Uh, number one, tile. It does a better job than the S3 did on tile, but it still doesn't do as great as I would hope. Unless you really kind of hit the grout of the tile like multiple times, it's probably not even going to saturate the, the grout, much less pick up uh, like gunk and dirt and that kind of stuff that's in the grout line. That's kind of a big problem for me because like ultimately you're gonna be using this kind of vac mop thing on a bathroom floor and you want it to succeed in tile. And I just don't think that it does that good of a job. The suction power on the Tinoco S3 and the S5 just really isn't there. And you'll see in some of this footage that I'm overlaying here that, that there, there's like, there was just a hair that I could very easily move with my finger, but that the brush roller or the suction power of the Tinoco was not picking up. So that's, that, again, that leaves a little bit to be desired. Another thing is there was a little bit of rust that was building up in the d dirty water tanks. Like there's like these little metal prongs uh, that fit into the actual tank itself. There was a little bit of rust building up. Uh, I don't really think that that does anything. I don't think it's gonna be a concern at all. It's only cosmetic, but it's something maybe that nevertheless people should know about. Uh, customer service. Uh, Tinico, I, I rang up Tinico about the brush roller that got all junked up and they, for free, no shipping, nothing charges anything, no, no surcharges, uh, they sent out a new roller free, pretty much hassle-free. All I had to do was send them my name, address, and serial number. 
They replaced it, no problem. So their customer service seems to be pretty decent. So I'm gonna give, I'm gonna chalk that up as a win to Tinico. Ultimately, do I recommend this product? This really, this really kind of is where I'm, I'm having trouble here. This is not a quick device. Meaning that if you have like, let's say, uh, a, a child that spills something or, or a pet that, a cat that vomits, something like this. I find it really hard to recommend using the Tinico S5 or even the S5 3, S5 Pro, any of them, to do these quick little mopping hits. For example, uh, we have a cat and that cat sheds hair. And sometimes, that a cat also vomits, but sometimes that cat sheds hair. And I just wanna quickly hit those little spots to, to vacuum up the hair. And the thing is though, is that if you do these tiny little quick hits, inevitably the vacuum is gonna have you run through the self-cleaning cycle. And when it does that, it's gonna put all of that spent water into the dirty water tank. If you leave that dirty water tank lingering around for more than about a day, it will smell so bad. I cannot describe to you the odors that come from that dirty water tank. And my house is very, very clean. And for that matter, the stuff that we're picking up with this vacuum is, I, I, have, I have never, like practically speaking, picked up vomit and that kind of thing with it. I've only done things like, like hair, your typical mopping, stuff like that. And yet somehow that dirty water tank reeks. So the problem with the Tenneco specifically is that it is not a quick use device. You always have to run the self-cleaning cycle. You have to empty out that dirty water tank. There's hair and other debris and junk that gets stuck around the roller. Meaning that every time you do that, you also have to take the roller out, let it dry, wash off any kind of excess, pull out any caught hair, this kind of thing. And that to me makes the Tinico less than practical. I want something like a vacuum, like the Dyson, where I can just quickly find a, something and hit it. Now, I don't think Tinico ever claims that the vac mop is necessarily a replacement to a traditional vacuum. I think that's why the S5 Pro has the vacuum feature built in is to kind of avoid those kinds of obstacles. But nevertheless, it's something that you're gonna wanna consider that this is not your, oh, there's the quick little stain right there on my, on my hardwood floor. Like uh, I, I tracked in a little bit of mud. Let me just hit that one little quick area. No, it's something that you really have to like do the whole house with. Otherwise, well, you're just gonna be emptying out that dirty water tank, wasting water, wasting a lot of time. I mean, you can literally, if you, let's say you tracked in a little bit of mud, you could literally take a bottle of Windex, paper towel, pss, pss, wipe, and have that finished before you take the Tinico out, hit, hit the spot, and then get done cleaning it, emptying out the dirty water tank. You get the idea. It's just not a fast product. So. Do I recommend the Tinico S5? I do think that they've improved a lot of stuff over the S3. I had a lot of complaints with the S3 and all the people that said that I was wrong are wrong. And the S5 has improved upon a lot of those things. But the, um, I, you know, I think it's for a specific audience, people that have like a big first floor, hardwood floor situation and need to do a lot of mopping and stuff. Maybe if they have like a lot of pets, kids, this kind of thing and they're, they're mopping almost a daily basis, then I can see the merit in this. But if you're somebody that just kind of needs it for quick little hits around the house, it is not good for that. And I'm also really not convinced that it's that great on a bathroom. It will hit the tile, like the ceramic part is fine. The grout though, it will leave unagitated. So that is the Tinico S5. I somewhat recommend this product. It just kind of depends on what your needs are. I uh, hope this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe. Please tell your friends. If you buy one, please buy one from the affiliate link. It does help us. Uh, otherwise, um, yeah, we'll be back with another video really, really soon.